your day off today, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I am going to pamper myself all morning and then Barry's coming over at lunch for a nibble. Hey, and I don't mean on a ham sandwich either. <laughs> Thought you stayed last night. Well, yeah, I did, but he had to go early. Hmm, before his wife woke up and found he'd be gone all night. I've told you, he's not married. If you're going to go on like that... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get much sleep. Last night, I was sure there was someone watching the flat. There was a car parked over there. When he saw me looking, it sped off. Well, did you phone the police? And say what? I should have written the registration down, I suppose. Why would someone be watching your flat? Oh, isn't it obvious? It's Charlie Boy up to his old tricks again. Has to be. I got myself that worked up last night. I had to have a few vodkas to steady me, and now I've got a banging headache. Well, listen, it's going to be quiet today, so you just take it easy. And the minute something strange happens, you phone the police. And if you think somebody's spying on you tonight, you phone me and I'll send Barry straight over. No, oh, it's probably nothing. You have a nice day. You too. Bye. Take care. Do you know, she is such a drama queen. She can't bear the fact I've got a fella and she hasn't. The only thing stalking her is an ego. So we you? Well, I had Amy all night. So why the long face? I'd have thought you'd been made up. Well, Tracy didn't drop her off till late and then picked her up first thing. All she did was sleep. I couldn't play with her or anything. Oh, at least you saw her, though. Uh, I just kept staring at her all night, willing her to wake up. I think Tracy probably gave her sleeping tablets or something. Hey, this'll put you right, my little switchboard princess. I'll just give it a rest, Les, because my head feels like it's going to explode. That's because you were mixing your drinks. No, that's because I've got you and me here going on and on and on about call the signs. What's to go on about? We had a vote. They stay. Oh. I had eight rum and blacks and two lagers. I don't know what I was voting on. I mean, call signs, why, why can't you just use your usual names like you always do? Oh, come on, I. It's a bit of fun. Well, the way I feel today, I can't even remember my own name. Never mind put out calls and remember to call him Pathetic Male. Hey, I'm Alpha Male. And Sanjay, oh, the hooded claw. Is it our fault you can't hold your drink? I just want a quiet day. Not this again. I thought we decided we were going to stop all this. No, ma'am. We had a vote last night while you were doing your babysitting act. The call signs stay. It was unanimous. Hey, Eileen. Have you tried mixing a raw egg in some Worcester sauce? Ooh. It's my best man's beach. I thought I'd better get a start on it. Oh, you're Charlie's best man. Well, uh, that do you? Yeah. Well, it's one twenty-five, love. Hey, if you know any dirty jokes, Rita. Oh, me, love? I only know clean jokes. It's Norris who knows dirty jokes, only he's not speaking to anybody today. Are you, Norris? He's in a mood. That's one twenty-five, love. Cheers, love. Thank you. Bye-bye, love. This man, he's only just started shaving. I wish he wouldn't do that. Oh, he speaks. Do what? Ridicule me in front of customers, and I'm not in a mood. I mean, just because I'm not a little ray of sunshine and chirping like the dawn chorus doesn't mean I'm in a mood. I'm just subdued, that's all. And with just cause. Not that you take the trouble to ask why, of course. I mean, it's much easier to take casual swipes, isn't it, than to show an actual interest. Sorry. I'm chastised. So what's the matter, then? I've had another rejection letter, but I'm not dwelling on it and I'm not looking to you for sympathy. Not that I get any. It's just a... Little setback, that's all. So you make the most of ridiculing me while you can. Because I won't be around much longer. I normally get the bus, but there's road works and they're rerouting the number six. It's very inconvenient. Yeah, there's road works everywhere you look these days, isn't there? I'm glad I don't drive anymore. I used to get very tense whenever I saw traffic cones. Anyone clear for base? Should be too long. Red Stallion just cleared Mapper King Street. Who? Harry, is that you? Red Stallion. Who's Red Stallion? It's me, Lloyd. I thought you were Lone Wolf. I'm just trying out new handles. Oh, well, and how am I supposed to know who you are? Hey, I like it. Lone Wolf. Nice one. Oh, shut up, Les. I'm not Les. I'm Alpha Male. You're not. You're Alpha Burke. Hey, what number did you say for that Newington Grove job? 36. Yeah. Well, for your information, there is no 36. But don't worry. The fellow was waiting for me outside 26. And I explain about your problem with the drink. 
Isn't that right, Father? I told you about her being on the booze. Don't start me, Leslie Loudmouth Croddle. It was you who started it. Oh, what, by calling you a Burke, Alpha Burke? If I'm Alpha Burke, then what are you? Drunken dog? Or maybe hung over hand? What about thick, ignorant wazzock as a call sign for the pair of you? What kind of expensive finishing school did you learn language like that? Because I'm switching off. Um, I don't think I'll bother with a taxi, thank you. Uh, I think I'd rather walk. Oh. It's not like you to be off your food, Fizz. Are you saying I eat too much? No! I need to bite my head off. Sorry, sorry. It's just I can't eat. My stomach's in knots. Oh, this is about that Molly, isn't it? Yeah, she's after Kirk. But she don't want him cos she wants him. She wants him cos I want him, cos he's mine and she hates me. Who could hate you? Molly, that's who. I've taken Kirk for granted, though, haven't I? I mean, it never really entered my head that someone else would be interested in the great pudding. But you don't really think that she is interested in him, do you? No, she isn't. I know she isn't. But I know Kirk. You see, he takes people as he finds them. He never really sees folk for who they really are. Devious, spiteful, malicious. Well, Kirk's daft about you. Everybody can see that. Yeah, he's daft about dogs too, and so's she. Or at least she pretends to be. Honestly, you should hear them together. It's like they're talking a different language. It's hind quarters this, glossy coats that. I know what she's doing. I did it myself when I wanted Tyrone and he was engaged to Maria. Oh, fits. It's fate, isn't it? I stole Tyrone and now Kirk's gonna be stolen off me. It's gonna happen, Ailey. I know it is. Not working today? Charlie's giving the morning off. Did you go out with him last night? No. I thought I saw him. Remind me again, what sort of car's he got? Charlie doesn't drive a car, he drives a truck. Oh, wow. What are you doing? My best man speech, but I don't know what to put. You're Charlie's best man? Yeah, only I'm never good at thinking of things to say and stuff. Oh, I'll help you. You want to put something like, uh, Charlie Stubbs is low-life scum who thinks all women are sitting ducks. Then he can't get into bed, he threatens and bullies, and those he does bed, notably my daughter, he knocks about and keeps imprisoned. He don't want toasting, he wants lynching and dissecting. How's that? <laughs> Hello, Weatherfield Arms. Oh, hello, Fred. Why, what's happened? I'll be ten minutes. Well, well, well. It's, uh, Reenie, isn't it? Uh, Rita. That's right. Do you know, I've not been in here for, well, oh, it must be ten years. Is she still here? You know, what's her name? Mavis. Uh, no, sorry, do I know you? Our paths crossed once or twice. <laughs> to think Norris ended up here. You want Norris? Actually, I suppose it's quite apt in a way. He took Derek's place in my life and Mavis's in yours. Your Angela Norris's? Ex-wife, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and here he is. Oh, hello, Norris. <laughs> Good. I thought you'd best see this for yourself. <sighs> Whoever did it must have been quick. I saw it before I went in back, and I must have been gone, oh, five minutes tops. Who would have done such a thing? And then they don't this lot. I was just around your front door like you were a charity shop. Well, what are they? Clothes. Men, seems to be. I don't understand. You've not been doing out with someone you shouldn't have been doing it with. No, I swear, I'm not seeing anyone. Oh, look at it. What must people think? Now, don't get yourself upset. How can I not be upset? How should I react when someone writes that on my door? Give us ten minutes and I'll paint it out for you. Oh, would you? Certainly. Out for a damsel in distress. I thought someone was watching the flat last night. You what? This just proves it. It's Charlie Stubbs playing mind games. And what can I do? The police are laughing in my face and if I confront him... Well, that's what he wants, isn't it? 
For me to make a scene, drive me and Shelley apart again. No, yes, won't you, you just get yourself inside and I'll go and fetch the paint. We've some left over from having our Joshua's room done through. Sky blue, all right? Oh, anything. Just get rid of it, please. Oh, you've hardly changed. <laughs> I wish the years had been as kind to me. What are you doing here? I've come to see you. How long has it been? Ten years? Oh, dear Norris. Oh, don't you dear Norris me. I suppose your precious Neville told you I'd applied for a job and, and you've just come here to look down your nose at me. Yes, well, I've got news for you, Angela. Your days of humiliating me are well and truly over. Yes, they are. And I want to apologise to you. Apologise? I realise that our marriage, well, it wasn't altogether harmonious, but it was a long time ago. I've changed. I've come to regret how things were between us. Oh, yes. I can offer no explanation but to say that I was foolish and I didn't appreciate what I had. Dear Norris. And that's why I've come here today, to try to make amends. Yes, yes, well, there's no need. So. Just get back on your broomstick and fly back to Neville, and you can have another good laugh at my expense. Look, I, I may only work in a, a, a little news agent and, and have no authority apart from bossing surly paper lads around or, or deciding whether we have digestives or fig rolls for our elevenses, but at least I've got my dignity. I deserve that, I know. But I've not come to laugh at you, Norris. I've come to offer you a job. A job? Uh, oh, yes. The one Neville offered me, making tea. No, of course not. Neville was only jesting. Oh, you should have known that, Norris. He's very fond of you. He used to undermine me every opportunity he got. In fun. He tampered with the brakes of my company car. A lark. Oh, poor Norris. You never did get Neville's sense of humour, did you? No, it's the job you applied for. You'd be perfect for it. I'd have seen you at the interview myself, only I was away. A funeral. Oh, dear. Was it someone close? My sixth husband. It wasn't until last night that Neville told me it was Norris who'd applied. I'm a strong believer in fate, Reenie. I believe that when one door closes, another one always opens. Or when one husband dies, another applies for a job. Exactly. I can see you're surprised, Norris. Now, don't say anything now. Think on it. Perhaps we could meet for a bite to eat later on. I've got your number. I'll phone. Are you sure you're not imagining it? What's that word that means, like, your biggest enemy? Sounds like it should be a flower. Nemesis? Yeah, that's it. Our Billy used to read a lot of comics. He was always going on about Nemesis. Batman had the Joker, Superman had Lex Luthor, Wonder Woman had the Cheetah, and I have got Dog Woman, or Bitch for short, out to destroy everything that I've got, Ailey. Only I haven't got any superpowers to fight her with. Yes, you have. You've got the greatest superpower of all. Love. Okay, she doesn't. Love conquers everything. Nah, I don't believe that. In our house, it was the one who shouted the loudest and thumped the hardest who conquered everything. I need the toilet. Right. We rushed off our feet all day. Kirk's working through his lunch on getting him an hot pot. I think he deserves something special, don't you? You're enjoying this, aren't you? What? Winding me up, trying to make me feel threatened. I'm not doing anything. All I'm doing is being a good kennel maid. Not my fault that your fella's bored and he's looking for someone different. To be honest, I'm surprised he's stuck with you as long as he has. For you and my dog, I'd have had you put down months ago. Everything all right? Yep. Just, I, uh. Heard you over the radio having a little rant. Yeah, well, if they want to play silly beggars with the call signs, that's up to them. Me, I'm having a little bit of me time. Meaning? Meaning they can call themselves and me until they're blue in the face. What, you've turned the radio off? Oi! Have you got puffins or what? That is.
is what I'm talking about. Him abusing me down that thing. I mean, it's mayhem. My head is spinning. I'm, they keep changing their names. I can't organise them. It's impossible. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sorry, but it's really getting to me. I've just had enough. Well, it's flipping Lloyd, isn't it? I told him all this would go belly. Hello, playmates. Hello. Just, uh, just go with me on this. Eileen, you can't. Go what? Just go with it. This is your fault. What is? Eileen says she's going to quit. What? Why? Because you changing all the names, you know, giving Caveman Les licence to abuse me over the airwaves. Mm. I've tried pleading with her. Says she's going to walk out right now. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. But, but it's just a bit of fun. It means nothing. So what are you going to do now, eh? Hey? Eileen is our biggest asset. Dial a cab, will snap her up like that. They've been after her for months. Our biggest competitor and you have just played right into the hands. Go after her, man. Stop her. Me? It's you that's got us in at this mess. I'll pop out later and put on the second coat. At least he's obliterated the writing. Fred, I am grateful. You're a lifesaver. You're not to worry. It's probably some poor demented soul who should be locked up by rights. It's someone who means me harm. I know it is. I shan't sleep a wink tonight. I thought you and that Stubbs had sorted out your differences. He's mad in your shilling next week. That's him all over. Luring folk into thinking all's fine and all the time planning his next move. I can't even go to the police, not after what happened before. Time was something like this. I just shrug it off. Listen to me. What do I sound like? Pull yourself together, woman. Now, I'll tell you one thing. You're not stopping here tonight. You're coming over to ours. You can have my bed. I'll keep on floor. Oh, don't be silly. If you stop here, you'll not sleep a wink, I say. And you'll not sleep a wink for worry. And you'll not be the only one, either. I've got an imagination to match Alfred Hitchcock. You're very kind. Yeah. And if this nonsense doesn't stop, we'll both of us go to the police. And I shall insist that they do so much about it. Anyway, let's get back to the shop. Are you going to be all right? Yeah. And thanks for doing the door. My pleasure. Here you go, Eileen. Thanks. How long do you reckon we're going to have to wait? Oh, we won't wait long. Eileen. <laughs> oh, as Steve told you how sorry I am. I'm not talking to him, and the same applies to you. Told you. Oh, come on, I. You can't mean it about leaving. What would streetcars be without you? Look, if Les isn't having a go about my weight, he's calling me a lush. I've said that we'll stop the call signs. And I've also said that we'll make Les apologise. Publicly, in front of all the other drivers. Publicly, yes. I've also said that you'll do the graveyard shift all week, but you still won't budge. Come on, I. What can I say? What can I do? I mean, I'd even get down on my knees and beg right now if it'd make you change your mind. Go on, then. What? Get down on your knees and beg, or you'll talk. Please, Eileen. Please come back to work. And you'll stop the call signs and get Les to uh, apologise publicly. Goes without saying. I'll think about it. Buy me a drink, then I'll let you know. Pint of lager and a vodka and coke, please. Oh, hello. Well, I was expecting someone much younger. Who are you? Who am I? You stand there and have the brass face to pretend you don't know who I am. No, I'm sorry, I don't. Well, I'm the woman whose life you've wrecked. Make an habit of it, do you? Breaking up homes. I don't know what you're talking about. Have you been writing on my door? I'll do a damn sight more than write on doors. I'm going to make you pay. So it was... You've been following me, watching me. Well, I don't know who you are, but I've not broken up any homes. Oh, so you're saying you didn't know he was married? <laughs> you're evil! You should be branded so decent women know what you are. Right, that's enough. Listen to me a minute. You've got the wrong person. So what's this van doing part there, then? Barry's? Yes, Barry's. My husband. I'm not seeing Barry. Oh, just wait a minute. I Get out! You told me you weren't married. It's over. The marriage is over. I'm, I'm telling you, she is mad. Who do you think you're calling mad? Who are you? I'm his wife. How dare you say our marriage is over? It's not over until I say it is. Oh, I can 
explain. Get in the van! That's it! Clear off! I don't believe you! I don't believe hey, you! And if you want to know why he's an unfaithful, cheating rat, take a long look in the mirror, love. <sighs> next time, take my advice, will you? Married men have a nose for him. There won't be a next time. in her eyes. It wasn't there. That look of sharpened blades. <laughs> Never seen her without that look. It's like seeing a vicar in a tracksuit. <laughs> Unnerving. She knew very well my name were Rita. And well, she, she must think a lot of me to come all this way to offer me the job. See, and that's not like her. Positively used to avoid physical contact with me. She'd stick notes to the fridge door. I look nothing like a Reenie. People, well, people do change, don't they? I, I mean, not all of us need to. No. No, I, I think I'll wear the blue shirt. The cuffs aren't frayed. You're not seriously thinking of going meeting with her? Yeah. Tell her to go on Jumping Canal. She made you a life hell. That, that, that's just typical of you, isn't it, Rita? Tar in with the same brush. Whereas me, you see, I, I'm more willing to give people a second chance. That, well, that's why I've never been in favour of bringing back hanging. And it is a good job, you see. Now it looks to me like you'll be putting a card in the window for a new assistant. <laughs> <laughs>